Welcome to my podcast. Today, I will be previewing the Pacific Division in the NHL. Number one, the San Jose Sharks. San Jose Sharks are without a doubt the best team in the Pacific Division this year on paper. After a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals, they added Mikhail Botker and David Schlumpo in free agency. Timo Muir is also expected to make the team this year. Martin Jones is now a proven number one goalie and is capable of carrying a team to the finals. The only question mark I have about this team is their age. The core of this team is getting older. Are they going to decline? San Jose Sharks are one of my favorites to win the cup this year. Key arrivals, Mikel Bodker, David Schlepko, and Timo Mir. Key departures, Roman Polak, James Reimer, and Nick Spaulding. Strengths, depth on offense and defense. They have all world talent, a tremendous power play, a great number one goalie, and great top four defense. Their weakness is that they don't have an experienced backup goalie for Martin Jones if he were to get injured or something to ha- happens to him. Key players, Joe Pavelski, Logan Pitcher, Brett Burns, Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe, Thomas Hurdle, or McCup. Yeah, Thomas Hurdle, Martin Jones, Mark Edward Vlasic. X Factor is Mikhail Bodker. Mikhail Bodker is the X Factor because he's not penciled in to be playing on the power play, but he's penciled in to be playing alongside Joe Gordon and Joe Pavelski. Number two in the Pacific Division, I project will be the Anaheim Ducks. Even though the Anaheim Ducks did not get better and lost some of their depth players, they are still a contending team because of their top end talent. The Ducks lost David Perron, Mike Santorelli, Jamie McGinn, Ben Brandon Peary, and Frederick Anderson in the offseason. They replaced them with Anton Vermette, Mason Raymond, Jonathan Bernier, and Chris Wagner. Nick Ritchie is expected to be a key contributor on this team this year. He is projected to be playing on the line with Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff. Due to their surplus of defensive depth, I would not be surprised if Cam Fowler gets moved this offseason. After trading away Frederick Anderson, the Ducks are banking on John Gibson being their number one goalie. If he falters, they do have Jonathan Bernier, but he has proven that he is not a number one goalie. Anaheim Ducks are still huge contenders in the West. Key arrivals, Antoine Vermette, Mason Raymond, Jonathan Bernier, and Chris Wagner. Key departures, David Perron, Mike Santorelli, Jimmy McGinn, Brandon Peary, and Frederick Anderson. The strength of the Ducks is that they have a dynamic duo of Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff. They have a great balance of youth and veteran players, and they have a great defensive depth. Their weakness is a lack of depth on the offense, and their goaltending may be a question mark because John Gibson hasn't quite solidified himself as a number one goalie, and Jonathan Bernie isn't a proven number one goalie. Key players, Ryan Getzlaff, Corey Perry, Ryan Kessler, Hampshire Slingholm, Sammy Batten, Cam Fowler, Ricard Raquel, Jacob Silkberg, and John Gibson. X Factor is Nick Ritchie. Nick Ritchie is penciled in to be playing alongside Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff. Three in this division is the Los Angeles Kings, or at least that's my prediction. Right now, the Los Angeles Kings are not a Stanley Cup caliber team that they were in 2014. They just aren't. Due to the limit of cap space that they have, the Kings have lost key players in the offseason once again. 
and their depth is just not as good as it once was. Losing Milan Lucic in free agency is really going to hurt this team. It leaves a noticeable void at the left wing, alongside Ante Kopitar and Martin Gabrick. Teddy Purcell was brought in to replace Milan Lucic, but let's just face it, Purcell is not an adequate replacement for Lucic. They also added Zach Trotman and Tom Gilbert in free agency, which allows them to have better depth on defense. Jeff Zetkov was brought into backup Jonathan Quick. He isn't going to get much action as Quick is going to be the workhorse goalie. LA Kings are still going to be a playoff team, but they will need to prove that they are legit contenders. Key arrivals, Teddy Purcell, Zach Trotman, Tom Gilbert, and Zach, Jeff Zakoff. Key departures, Milan Lucic, Luke Shen, Jonas Enroth, Vinny LeCavier, and Christian Erhoff. Strengths of this team is superstars and Drew Doughty and Anze Kopitar. They have all world talent on this team. And they have an elite goalie in Jonathan Quick. Weakness is they are weak at the left wing. They don't really have a good left winger. I mean, Tanner Pearson is okay, but in general, their left wing is kind of weak. And they don't have a proven or fine center. Key players Anze Kopitar, Drew Doughty, Jeff Carter. Jonathan Quick, Tyler Toffoli, Jake Muzzin, Marion Gabrick, and Tanner Pearson. The X Factor is Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown just got stripped of his captaincy. It's going to be interesting to see how he adjusts to playing without the captaincy and playing as a third line role. He's going to get a much, much reduced role on the team. He's no longer going to be a first or second liner. He's most likely going to be a key role player on this team. It's going to be interesting to see how he makes this adjustment. Fourth, Edmonton Oilers. This just may be finally the year where the Edmonton Oilers turn things around and make a playoff push. They have a franchise superstar in Connor McDavid. They added Milan Lucic in free agency and drafted Jesse Coach Jarby. The big news surrounding the Oilers this offseason was the Oilers trading Taylor Hall to the New Jersey, New Jersey Devils in exchange for defenseman Adam Larson. On paper, this trade may seem uneven, but Adam Larson is exactly what the Oilers need a shutdown defense. Men. Jonas Gustafson was signed as backup to Camp Talbot. Edmonton Oilers are a young team that has the right pieces in place to be a contending team in the next few seasons. Key arrivals, Milan Lucic, Adam Larson, Jesse Poljujarvi, and Jonas Enron. Uh, sorry. Key departures, Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall, sorry. Strengths. They have depth and talent at the center position. They have a superstar at, in Connor McDavid, and they have depth at right wing. Their weakness is their depth on defense, and their defense is weak in general. Their goaltending may be a question mark as well. Key players Connor McDavid, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jordan Eberle, Leon Dreistel. Milan Lucic, Adam Larson, Oscar Clefbaum, and Cam Talbot. X Factor is Jesse Pujari. The Edmonton Oilers' success is going to depend on how fast Jesse Pujari develops. If Jesse Pujari can develop into that bona fide stud player alongside Connor McDavid, in one or two years, they can be a contending team in one to two years. Five, 
Arizona Coyotes. Not only do the Coyotes have a great group of young players, they put themselves in a great position in terms of cap space for next year. In the offseason, the Coyotes added Alex Ogologoski, Jamie McGinn, and Radim Verbata to free agency. They made a free few trades also to take on cap space. This includes adding Pavel Datsuk and Dave Bolin's contract. Lawson Kraus was traded to the Coyotes alongside Dave Boland for taking back his horrible contract. Tobias Ryder hasn't been resigned yet, but in case he isn't, they have Christian Dvorak who can play in the top six. Dylan Strom is expected to be the team's number two center next season and will be a huge part of the team. Even though Arizona isn't expected to make the playoffs this year, the future looks bright. Key arrivals, Jamie McGinn, Alex Golgoski, Radim Rubata, Ryan White, Kristen Dvorak, possibly, Dave Bowen and Pavel Datsuk's contract. Key departures, Antoine Vermette, Nicholas Grossman, and Alex Tanke. Strengths, they have a good top six boards. They have a good top four defense. They have a solid number one goalie with Mike Smith and goal. And they have a promising core of young players. Their weakness, their defensive depth is rather weak. And they lack a true number one center as of right now. Key players, Oliver ekman Larson, Max Domi, Anthony DeClaire, Martin Hansel, Alex Golgoski, Dylan Strom, and Mike Smith. X-Factor, Tobias Ryder, or Christian Dvorak. If Tobias Ryder is resigned, he is going to be the X-Factor. It's not... Christian Dvorak will be the X-Factor. Sixth in the Pacific Division will be the Calgary Flames. Be in for a long season because they have some good talent on their team, but they lack proven depth players on offense. And the goaltending is the question mark as well. Troy Brower was added in free agency because of his playoff experience and to mentor Gujo and Monahan. It was acquired to be the number one goalie. However, I'm not sure how far he will lead them as a number one goalie, as he's playing on a noticeably worse team than the Blues. After all, the Blues defense was absolutely tremendous. Alex Chasen and Lyndon Bay were signed to provide depth for this team, but they aren't quite proven yet. Middle part of this team next year, or this year, he's penciled in as the number two center. Flames have huge expectations of them. Calgary couldn't surprise everyone like they did two years ago but the chances of that happening is slim because they just don't have too, they just have too many what ifs with this team. Key arrivals, Brian Elliott, Troy Brower, Alex Cheeson, Lyndon Bay, Chad Johnson, and Matthew Kachuk. Departures, Jonas Enroth, or Hiller, sorry, Jonas, Jonas Hiller, Kerry, Ramo, Joe Coburn, Josh Joris, and Mason Raymond. Strengths, they have a dynamic duo of Goudreau and Monahan. They have a great top defensive pair with Brody and Giordano. And they have great young talent in emerging with Shinkarook, Sam Bennett, and Matthew Kachuk. Their weakness is they don't have a proven top four defense 
pair or the batsman to pair with Lady Hamil Dougie Hamilton. Their offensive depth is weak, and their goaltending is a question mark. Key players Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monahan, Mark Giordano, TJ Brody, Doug Hamilton, Sam Bennett, Troy Brower, and Ryan Elliott. Their X Factor is Hunter Shentrook. Seven and last place in the Pacific Division will be the Vancouver Canucks. Without a doubt, the Vancouver Canucks are the worst team in the Pacific Division. Even with the additions of Louis Erickson and free agency, the Canucks still need some talent to be added to their team. And they have many noticeable weaknesses. Eric Bronson was acquired from the Florida Panthers for Jared McCann. This is a good trade for them because they are in desperate need of a top four defenseman. Canucks also added Philip Larson to provide some offensive punch from the blue line. If the Canucks want to remain a competitive team, a few things need to happen. Ryan Miller needs to be Ryan Miller. Eric Bronson needs to be a bruising force on defense. And Jake Bertanen needs to emerge as a go-to player. The changes of the Vancouver Canucks bringing in The changes of the Vancouver Canucks bring oh, the changes that Vancouver Canucks made are not gonna make them a playoff caliber team. They just aren't good enough to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. This gives Canucks fans a cause of concern because the Sandin twins are not going to get any younger. Key arrivals, Louis Erickson, Eric Bonson, Bell Larson. Key departures, Radim Verbata, Jarek McCann, Matt Barkowski, Barkowski, sorry, Lyndon Bate, Chris Higgins, Strength. They have the Sedin Twins, Twin Magic, Great depth at center and left wing. Weakness. Defense weak. They have a lack of scores at right wing, and the goaltending is uncertain. Key players Henrik Steen, Daniel Steen, Louis Erickson, Alex Edler, Brandon Sutter, Chris Tanna, and the goaltending tandem of Jacob Markstrom and Ryan Miller. X Factor is Eric Bronson. If Eric Bronson turns into the player that the Panther hoped that he would be when he got drafted, the Canucks may be a competitive team, but if not, they may be one of the worst teams in the team league. So that's my prediction on the Pacific Division. And that will wrap it up for this podcast. Next podcast, I will be talking about the pros and cons of the World Cup of Hockey Tournament this year.